Okay, now uh, propositional logic. You, I, I think most of you folks have probably seen this already. Um, so, but I, it's good to refresh, so I'm, I'm gonna spend a little time going over it. Anyone who can guarantee that they've never seen this before? Okay. Um, propositional logic. Why well, do you know why it's called propositional logic? Well, it's boole also Boolean logic after Boole, but in AI we often call it propositional logic. A anybody know what it means to be for propositional logic? First off, there are lots of different kinds of logics. Anyone know what a logic is? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. You, you, you need a, 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 a syntax to write down stuff. You need a semantics to know what the hell is going on and what's a legal thing to write down <coughs> and what it means. And then you have inference rules that you can apply on the syntax to derive stuff. And if you've got a good inference rule, it preserves the semantics. So things that were true derive true things. Um, exactly. So propositional logic is just a thing where the thing, the, the, the stuff in your logic represent propositions or entire facts. So like X might stand for it is raining outside. And uh, Y might be I am wet. And you might have, if, if you have this, if you wrote down this in your knowledge base, that would correspond to the belief, if you want to use a strong word, <coughs> that when it is raining, I will be wet. Right? So Oftentimes people get bored of writing really long things, so they just use little short variable names like x or x5 or something, but x5 is standing for some truth condition about the world. Um, you know, I am wearing brown pants or something like that. Um, so I already talked about modus ponens right here. This is the way you write an inference rule. These are the things that you already have, and then there's a line, and then there's the new thing. It's very much like arithmetic, right? It's like a plus B line C. Um, uh, there are all the different connectives and or that's the way I write not. That's the way I write implies. Uh, implies people write all kinds of different ways. Some people write it like that. Some people write it like that. I write it like that. That's the way your book writes it. I like your book. Um, I don't know if you've seen this before. This is bidirectional implication. So um, it's just syntactic sugar. Um, so uh, A and B, also called equivalence. A and B are equivalent means that uh, A implies B and B implies A. All right, so everyone's down with that? Okay. Is this an overlook of? Sure, which is the same thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, I am mad if and only if I am furious. I only have one stage of madness, which is high velocity madness. Um, okay, and these are truth tables where you write down the different variables and then you write down, like this is, if you want, the definition of and, um, saying under what conditions this conjunction is true as a function of its inputs. Um, and just in that case, when A, X, and Y. Um, and everyone has trouble with implication all the time. So I, even if you've seen it before, you'll probably have trouble with it again. I mean, it's, it's a little hard to get your mind around. What this means is if X is true, Y is true. And otherwise, who knows? All right. So the only time in which this is demonstrably false is if X is true and Y is not true then this does not hold. If x is false, who knows? You know, y can be true or false. I'm not making any claims about that. But if I assert this, I want to remove from consideration all those worlds in which this is true and that is not also true. So this is just not the state of affairs at all. That's what this statement is saying. Everyone get that? So it's not like the English if. When people use the English if, they very much, very often mean if and only if. Like, uh, I don't know. If you give me chocolates, I will marry you. Um, like, uh, that 
usually also means like if you don't bring me chocolates, I won't marry you, which is not what this means, right? Speaking of Valentine's Day. Uh, I didn't bring my wife chocolates. Uh, uh. Anyway, any questions about this? Everyone got this? Okay. Uh, all right, we already did this. A logic has a syntax, a semantics, and some inference rules. Um, I'm going to come back to the three layers a little bit later. Um, please write this down in propositional logic. So you'll have to invent some preposition, some propositions, not prepositions, propositions. All right, let's see what we got. Okay, who wants to go first? Nathan. Yeah, sure. Well, any whatever you want. Let's take the first sentence. Your variables? Okay, well, let's just give you first sentence. If the unicorn is mythical, then it's immortal. How did you represent that? The act of writing something down in a knowledge representation language is called knowledge engineering. So you just all did some knowledge engineering, kind of like sanitation engineering, <laughs> uh, except a little more fun. Wow. Whew. Okay. Mythical. Why? Mythical. Okay, because it's got a Y in it. Yeah. It's That's good. Word. There are all these M words. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can I just write M Y? M Y goes to what? Is what? Immortal. Cool. Fantastic. Okay. Adam, what do you get for the next sentence? Not mythical is a mortal mammal. Okay, now we face a decision point here. So MM, mortal mammal. Now, here we have to decide on the resolution, the granularity of your knowledge representation language. <coughs> Do you ever want to be able to represent immortal mammals and have the system have a symbol of mammal that it can combine with other things? Like, so you could talk about a truth about mammals in general, like that they have hair and give birth to live young and stuff like that. Uh, if you want to completely exclude the possibility of ever representing that stuff concisely in your knowledge representation language, then you could choose to have a single symbol for a mortal mammal. But I, I personally, I'd go for the factored representation. So I would, I would choose something like mortal. And Frank, what, would we, what kind of connective are we going to use here? Mortal mammal. Mortal mammal. Not mythical is a mortal mammal. Oh, yeah, let's get more concise. Beautiful, I love it. Not a mortal and a mammal. Fantastic, beautiful. Uh, Ryan, next sentence. It's either a mortal or a mammal, then it's horned. You can use whatever letters you want. I, I, I think I already have a mortal as an I. I not union. That's a little pointy thing with a corner on it. It's not curvy. It's like an ups, It's like a V, kind of a shape. I'm sorry. Did I maybe I heard you wrong? Disjunction. Yeah, conjunction and disjunction. Yeah. You can think of one of the sides as getting dissed. Like, uh, I could, this other side here could be totally false, and the whole thing could still be true. So, like, we don't have to respect that if that's already true. So, it's getting dissed. Uh, however, you want to remember it. Horned. That works for me. That works for me. Horned. Okay, we got one more sentence left. Bring it home, Dylan. There's a knowledge, another knowledge engineering conundrum. Do we want our knowledge base to be able to talk about non-unicorny things? I, I like that option, 
<laughs> if you talk to my daughter, though, she's like all over unicorns. So it's like fine with her if everything is about unicorns forever. It's just totally that and, and, and cookies and Valentine's Day at this point. Mm, H, what? what this is, I, I'm trying to encode this last sentence here. The unicorn is magical if it is horned. So, okay, what are you saying? So, H implies kind of magical. Horned okay. Beautiful. Every, sorry? Yeah, so ever, does everyone understand what we, anyone get something radically different than this? Does, like, does this challenge anyone's assumptions or? A function. That's not propositional logic. No. Nope. Okay. Propositional logic, you get two things. Really boring logic. That's why we're doing it in like half an hour, and then we're never going to see it again. Okay. Um, you've got two things. You got connectives, and you got propositions. That's all you got. Okay. So it's incredibly simple. Like even the ECE people can understand it. <laughs> uh, but. But but it, well, it's like Boolean logic, right? It's the foundation of all hardware. So I I, I hope they get it because <laughs> I want to use a computer. <laughs> um, but very straightforward, okay. very straightforward. That's all you got. So you you went way beyond. So this is just we're just doing simple old propositional logic. Like you got propositions and connectives, and that's it. So okay, we're good. So hold on to the thought about functions for like ten minutes from now. Uh, okay, we're all cool. Propositional logic. Anyone totally confused by this? No. Okay, great. Fantastic.